Hi everyone, I am pretend bringing today's lecture from Hor Rirap Monastery in Armenia. This was part of the Ottoman Empire at the time that we will be talking about in terms of vampires, so I thought this would be an interesting place to bring our lecture from. For today's introduction to vampires lecture, I'm going to be talking a little bit about vampires and just giving you some of the basic characteristics of this class of monster as we launch into the next couple weeks of discussion. So what is a vampire? A vampire is an undead creature which survives by draining the life force of others. This doesn't automatically mean that it has to be blood. In other cases, it's energy. In other cases, it's life force, but it has to be some kind of draining. And it, this is done by an undead creature in order to maintain its own existence. Usually they operate at night in the dark and that sort of makes sense because otherwise how would this mysterious monster actually work? But it is associated with bats or plagues because it is associated with death and the draining of life force. People getting sick from a plague and losing energy and becoming weaker and weaker would seem like something is coming in every night and draining that life force, right? And so oftentimes vampires are more associated with that gradual weakening and sickness than with any actual specific creature or specifically with blood. And so what are the explanations of the vampire? So the one that we think is most likely is that there was a misunderstanding of why corpses swell when they decompose and why they have kind of weird bruising and patterning on the skin that doesn't really make a lot of sense in terms of the fact that they're dead and yet their bodies are still behaving in these weird ways. So vampires are often associated with bloatedness in a lot of different cultures. And so the creation of vampires usually has to do with corpses themselves. So if a particular animal, especially a cat, jumps over a corpse at a certain point during burial or a certain point during processing, that can become a vampire. In addition, corpses that are not handled properly will become vampires. And this is especially true outside of the Western paradigm. So this is especially true in China and Sub-Saharan Africa. And it's only much later in the European and subsequently American tradition that vampires make other vampires, like that they turn other innocent victims into vampires. Like that's a much later conception and that's really only in the Western tradition. That doesn't exist in other traditions. In other traditions, anybody can become a vampire. It doesn't matter if other vampires are around. It's the mishandling of a corpse that leads to a vampire, not other vampires. So it's not like contagious in the same sense as it is in the West, you have to be careful not to create vampires by being lackadaisical with your corpse handling. So how do you defeat an, a vampire? You use an atropaic. An atropaic is a charm that keeps evil beings away. And this is general, right? This isn't specifically to vampires. Atropaics can be used to ward off any kind of evil spirits, but that's how you fight a vampire, right? And the main one that we associate with vampire is garlic. And this actually exists in a number of cultures. And the reason for this is that garlic is something that was used because of its strong smell in the handling and processing of corpses. So the way that the mortician would be able to handle the corpse is if he would stuff a rag full of garlic and shove it in his pocket so that he wouldn't have to smell the decomposing body or even garlic was used and burned around corpses in order to basically get the nasty smell out, right? And so if vampires love corpses that are bloated and the smell of garlic keeps those corpses bad smells away, it should keep those vampires away too, right? Because it masks the smell of the bloated corpse. In addition, there are a large number of religious items, which are apotropaics. And these can include crucifixes, holy water, rosaries, um, there's a lot of different ways that you can create an item that is holy. Basically, if a priest blesses anything, you can use it to fight a vampire, depending on the storyline. Like, we can be very, very flexible about that. In addition, mirrors can be used to fight vampires, and this is because of the association with vampires not having a soul, and the mirror is supposed to reflect one's soul in a lot of cultures. That's part of the reason that people are like, afraid of using mirrors or afraid of using photographs 
because mirrors and photographs capture a part of the soul. And so if vampires don't have souls or vampires are corpses whose souls have already gone to heaven, then they won't be reflected in mirrors and they won't be able to be photographed. So mirrors and, and photography sort of can be used to fight vampires or at least to identify them. And then how do you kill a vampire? You stake them through the heart or in most cultures through the mouth. So in many societies, because vampires are associated with that sucking out of the life force, that's what you go for. Not their heart, they're already dead. You go for the mouth because that's where they're actually sucking the energy through. Again, decapitation is the same way. They have to use the mouth to consume the life force and then process it in their body. So if you separate the mouth and the head from the rest of the body, then they're going to end up dying. It's really only in the 20th century with modern writings that sunlight becomes a problem. Like Dracula doesn't even have a problem with sunlight. Like this is a very 20th and 21st century phenomena. It doesn't appear in any of the early literature. It doesn't appear in a lot of other cultures. Rather, it's just that they operate at night because it's more convenient. It's not that they will literally melt if there's sun around. And then, of course, destroying their habitat is a way of killing vampires, but this also only appears in Dracula and then subsequent iterations of the vampire after that. Now, you might be wondering, are there any characteristics that connect all vampires? That's an interesting thing, right? Because there are a lot of different characteristics of vampires. How much is religion important? Like, if you're like, well, you need a crucifix to fight a vampire, what about vampires that exist in cultures that don't have Christianity? Obviously, they don't have crucifixes to fight them. So what is the primary way to fight a vampire that's true across all cultures? And what is like the weird characteristic that all vampires share? Arithmomania. That's right. You didn't see this one coming. But in almost all societies that have the concept of the vampire, vampires are obsessed with counting things. And so if you want to fight a vampire, you give him something to count and it will distract him. Now, this is part of the association between vampires and money or wealth because vampires have to count their wealth. This is also actually the reason that you have Count Von Count on Sesame Street because the guy who created the puppets for Sesame Street actually read somewhere that vampires were obsessed with counting and so on. Oh, I have to create a counting character. Let me do a vampire. That would be really funny. But... We also have examples of it from outside of the West. So for example, I'm gonna talk about Jiangxi. Jiangxi are, are Chinese vampires. And how do you fight a Jiangxi vampire? When he's sleeping in the ground during the day because he's a corpse, you pour a bag of rice over the grave. Then when he comes out of the grave at night, before he can go around and terrorize people, he has to count all of the rice on the ground in order to know how much is there because vampires are obsessed with counting. That's arithmomania. It's weird, it's fascinating, but it's a really interesting cross-cultural absolute when nothing else about the vampire is other than that they drain life force. For some reason, they are obsessed with counting. All right, guys, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed today's lecture. Just gave us some of the basics so that we can continue forward in our discussions of the vampire. Thanks so much for listening.